So we are going to do the integral of 1 over x times the square root of 9x squared minus 1 dx. And the reason that I like this integral in particular is that even though it's a fairly simple integral to evaluate, I think it can teach us a few important things about problem solving in general. So to start off with this integral, we see that there's a square root in the denominator. And generally when there's a square root, it's a good idea to try substituting it just to see what happens. So if we let u equal the square root of 9x squared minus 1, we don't see any type of du jumping out at us in this integral, so it's probably a good idea to try to isolate x in this square root and then try to find dx that way. So if we square both sides, we get that u squared equals 9x squared minus 1. Add 1 to both sides, u squared plus 1 equals 9x squared. And finally, we can divide by 9. So we get that x squared equals u squared over 9 plus 1 over 9. And now we can find dx by differentiating both sides. So what we get is 2x dx equals, and then we get 2u over 9 by the power rule right here. And then 1 9 is a constant, so that goes away, and we just get du. Now we have a 2 on both sides, so we can cancel that nicely. And in order to isolate dx, we can just divide by x. So we get that dx equals u over 9x du. And now we have all the information we need to go back to our integral right here. So we get the integral of 1 over x times, and this square root is u. Then dx becomes u over 9x du. And we immediately see a u on the top and a u on the bottom, so that's nice to cancel. And we get the integral of 1 over 9x squared du. Wait a second. This entire integral is in terms of x, but we're supposed to integrate with respect to u. Do we need to start over? Like, did we mess something up here? Not yet. That's the first important thing that I think this integral teaches us is sometimes a problem seems like you've gotten to a place where it doesn't make sense and you need to start over and give up on this approach. But sometimes it just takes a little more perseverance and looking at the problem a little more deeply to figure out the answer. And in fact, in this case, if we go back to our work on the original substitution, we see that 9x squared is actually equal to u squared plus 1. So we can easily plug that into our integral here to get the integral of 1 over u squared plus 1 du. And of course, we know how to evaluate this. This just gives us the inverse tangent of u. And then we substitute back in our u. We get the inverse tangent of the square root of 9x squared minus 1 plus c. And that is our final answer. Now, if you've watched Black Pen Red Pen's 100 integrals video, you might have noticed that he got a different answer. I will tell you guys the answer to this right here. It's actually just the inverse secant of that input, which is 3x. He actually gets this integral to equal the inverse secant of 3x plus c. That's kind of weird. Not only do we have a different inverse trig expression, our answer has a square root in it, and his is just 3x. That's really weird. Did we mess something up? Do we need to go back and check our work? Well, that's the second thing I think that this integral can teach us, which is when we learn integrals, every Calc 1 and Calc 2 student knows that you can substitute a variable when you're doing an integration. However, what people sometimes forget is that substitution is useful a lot of the time outside of integrals. So let's take a look at this expression a little bit. We have the inverse tangent of the square root of 9x squared plus 1. What we can also do is look at this 9x squared as the quantity 3x and then squared, just like that. And if we look at this square root, what if this 3x were equal to some secant of some other variable theta? Well, then we would get the square root of secant squared minus 1, and we know that would turn into a tangent squared, which would be a lot easier to deal with. So let's look at this. We get the inverse tangent of the square root of secant squared theta minus 1. And we know that this inside, we're going to get the square root of secant squared theta minus 1 is tangent squared theta. And the square root of tangent squared theta is just going to become the tangent of theta. So we have the inverse tangent of tangent theta, which is, of course, just equal to theta. And now all we have to do is go back to our substitution, figure out what is theta exactly. Well, in this case, secant theta equals 3x. So theta equals the inverse secant of 3x. So in fact, both of these answers are exactly equal. So when you're doing these integrals, remember not to give up at the first sign of something becoming difficult in the problem. And sometimes 
when you're looking at a problem outside of integrals, you might also want to consider doing some kind of substitution.